Welcome to chapter 7 of my massive blunder tutorial. This is the final one in my low poly tutorial. And in this one I will be showing you blunder's bone structure system. So the first thing you're going to want to make sure of is that your 3D cursor is in the center of your character. Not like over here or over here. So the easiest way to recenter it is select one of your objects, go down to uh, this little bar right here, hit object, snap, and cursor to selection. And that'll snap the 3D cursor to the middle point of that object. To begin building your bone system, bring up the space bar menu, go down to armature, like that and you won't be able to see it yet because it's actually hiding behind the 3d object so then go down over to here choose x-ray for editing options for armature and envelope to make it nice and big but it's still not really that visible so click on the uh, three-way arrow here and wire that way when it's selected we can grab it much easier to see. It also lets you see through it so you can still see what you're editing. The controls for the bones are very similar to that of the regular objects, like G is to grab, S is to scale, R is to rotate, E is to extrude. So just grab them and extrude them till, you know, like, here we go, we got chest piece here, this will go up to the neck, and then, there we go, we got the head bone, and that's what all the head stuff will attach to, and then here in the front, you can also deselect everything, hit A, and then go add bone, and it'll add a new bone to that structure. And just place it there for the shoulder. It's also important to name your bones. So select a bone and give it a name. Then when you have them named, you can click this little drop down box. For instance, the shoulder isn't connected to anything yet, so we need to connect it to something. So have it selected. You could go to this little drop down box and choose chest. And you'll see there's a little line connected to it. So whenever this bone moves, these bones will be affected by it. When naming stuff that's supposed to be on a specific side, you want to go, for instance, shoulder one dot uppercase L. This way Blender knows that it's meant to be on the left side. That way, when we enable x-axis mirror editing, if we move this vertice, the vertice with the same name on this side will also be affected. So we only need to edit one side at a time. Makes things much easier. I already made a skeleton to show you what I mean. Here we go. As you can see, if I were to grab this bone piece and move it, you'll notice that the other side also gets affected. You'll notice that stuff in the middle isn't affected because there's only one of it. And now, if you were to go into pose mode, you can uh, get to it right from here. You just choose pose mode, and everything will turn blue. You can grab them and rotate them, and you'll notice that it works how it should. Thumb, fingers. But that doesn't look very impressive, so now let's attach it to our 3D model. First, what you're going to want to do is select your 3D model, and then hold down shift and select your skeleton. 
hit Control P, and this will bring up the Make Parent 2 armature or object, and choose Armature. And then choose Name Groups. This will name all the groups so it makes attaching your vertices to the bones much easier. So now go into edit mode. And then everything you want this bone for the head to affect, you just select it. Choose absolutely everything you want. And then go down to the link and materials option right here. And then hit this little arrow. These are all the different names of the bones in your armature. So then just look at the one you're trying to find, which would be head. And then hit assign. And then there you go. This bone now affects the head. So choose the skeleton, pose mode, and then move it around. But that doesn't look quite right because the 3D object is still as halves. If you want to make it its own full 3D object, go down to where your mirror options were and hit apply. And now when you go into edit mode, you'll notice that it's the full model. But only do this after you're done attaching all your verts to your bone. This way, if you do it afterward, it'll mirror all the vertice parents and everything. So you only need to do it for one side rather than doing it for each individual finger, or however, whatever you have your bones on. It's a huge time saver. This is quite possibly the, one of the things that eats up most of your time when it comes to modeling anything. I've already attached this bone structure to the 3D model, and I will just select some of them to show you what I've done. For instance, the, the different joints. So leg one, select, and that'll just select all the vertices that are associated with that bone. So here it is, just in the hip area. And it's just the first two rows of verts here on the knee, and then the, the back two. And it's the reverse for the, the bottom half of the leg. This way, when it bends, they share the middle vertices. So the back side has a chance for it to slide in and out, and the front compensates for the kneecap. M makes it look a little better. There are other ways to do knees, but I find this way works the best for me. And I've done that also for the elbows as well. At first, your bone structure may not deform your 3D model quite as you had hoped. Keep messing around with it, try out different things. It does take a little while in order to get it right and perfect the first time. Just keep trying. If you have other 3D models that you wish to also have associated with that bone structure, do the same thing that we did before with the, the main body. Select it, then select the bone structure, and then make it its parent and then just assign the vertices and it'll all work the same. The, the hair here and the body and the clothing are all separate objects and if I were to go into pose mode for them and start moving them around you'll notice that it works just fine, it moves just with it. And that's it for Bones. Hope it was informative and helpful in some way. That's it. Thanks for watching.